Hey, oh my Planet Zoo friends, Johnny Five Alive here, and welcome back to some more Planet Zoo. Let's build. Today we are doing a speed build of a, an extension to our hippopotamus enclosure. So we're going to be detailing. As you can see here, we're uh, expanding the enclosure area. We need some safe spots for the hippos to go and chill where they're away from the guests. So this is a nice little underground area that gives them some some away time uh, tucked off in some caves on the end and it's quite a large area i think adding both of those in added us something like three thousand square meters with that said we can go in and add more water later which will give us a lot more roaming room for our herd of hippos it's still unclear how much space a full herd of hippos is going to require but a while ago we did the estimate of like 15,000 land 15,000 water now there's no way we're going to reach that with the space that we we've given them which is absolutely insane because I thought this was a huge area so when you are doing tur uh, hippos be sure to give yourself a ton of space it's similar to the size of mine or even bigger but I think this should do if they get crowded at any point. We'll sell them off. But yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm liking it. I, I'm really happy with the choice here with the hippos. <laughs> Seems like they're going to be a good money maker. And it's fun to be able to make a big, gigantic, sprawling area similar to the savanna without having the actual 140 animals roaming around. It's the same thing, but better on performance and they prefer water way more which gives you underwater underground viewing capabilities it, it just it's a lot more fun to play with and it's it's quant it's quality over quantity so the hippos is a no-brainer it's definitely a go-to choice so as you can see here what i'm doing is i took one of the pre-made shelter pieces and i want to kind of mess around with it now for whatever reason i can't find the thatch pieces in the building set it must be somewhere under something else. It's, it, I can't find it under nature. I can't find it under construction. Maybe it's under habitat, which would be really strange. But yeah, I put the blueprint down and I just kind of ripped it apart and duplicated it across the whole bridge and modified it. Again, these in the beta, we want to we want to try to make them get the most bang for our buck. So we're just going to generally modify things when, if and when possible. So I just wanted to spruce up the inside of the hidden staff area. <clears throat> I talked about how I didn't like the red brick wall, and I was like, oh yeah, well, why don't I just cover it up? So that's what we did. We covered up with a sandstone brick, and then I wanted to hang some ivy off this and just kind of spruce it up a little bit, make it a little bit nicer. I mean, I, I like the fact that you can see the staff room, and you're like, oh, that's, that's it's definitely like a hidden staff room. I don't think every staff room needs to be completely hidden, but... It's enough there to suggest like, hey, this is where the staff are coming in and out. It blends in with the environment, but it's somewhat visible too. But for the guests, they won't really ever see it because we're using the sandstone. It's up against a rock wall. We've covered it up a bit. It's directly underneath the bridge or really far away from the viewing paths. They won't see it. They won't be bothered by it. And it's pretty freaking incognito. So I talked about the railings in the previous episodes. Uh, I'm... I'm I decided to go with the path railings and I think that I explained this later on it's weird because I did the <laughs> I did the recording for we're gonna go look at this real time but I already did that recording so I'm like I doing it backwards for some reason I was already in game and I wanted to keep building I was like well I don't want to spoil what I'm doing next so I just did that recording got it out of the way and now that I'm built out for the day I'm trying to get my voiceovers done so Anyways, I think I explained it later why I went with the railing, so I'll just save it for then. Uh, so now what I'm doing is like I need a entrance sign. So I'm all over the place in this episode. We 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 expanded the enclosure areas, uh, give them more privacy. We put a gazebo on top of the bridge. We've jazzed up the staff area, and now we're building a park entrance sign. We're really just like all over the place, fill fill filling and expanding and just decorating some of the bulk areas of our zoo. So I did name my my zoo Zanzibar Zoo. Uh, I thought yellow or orangish and light orange, like a yeah, a light orange. <clears throat> 
was the way to go here. I didn't know if I wanted to put it above the stairway or at the back. I ended up going with the back because, yeah, you'll see it as you're coming down the stairs. You'll see it as you're coming into the park, and it gives us a, an opportunity to layer up the rocks. So you saw a jump cut there. What I did is I went into the pieces, and I browsed around for like 10 minutes. Like, I, uh, our main thing here in our zoo is hippos and lions. That's like our go-to thing. So I found as many hippo and lion signs as I could. And I didn't know what I was doing with it. I found some cool leaves, uh, some different interesting shapes. Now there's a bug right now. You see me fiddling with it where it's stuck on angle snap and I can't bring up the widget to say undo angle snap. It's really frustrating. The only way I can get angle snap back is if I place a brand new object, which you're gonna see here, and now I have the options. But if I duplicate something, I lose the option. So it's 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 extremely frustrating. There's a tiny ton of little tiny quirks like that in the beta right now that just make building it extremely hard. So yeah, I grabbed all these different pieces from lines and hippos, some trees, and I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing with this. Let's just put it about. <laughs> I didn't I don't know what to say. <laughs> I didn't want to spend an hour or two making the most decorative thing because I'm going to lose it anyways. It's the beta. I'm going to lose the whole park. And honestly, I'm starting to fall in love with this park to a point where I'm like, I want to build this park all the way through like this. I want this to be my final park. I'm really it's it's going to defeat me. I'll tell you that much when I'm done this and then the game comes out. I'm going to be like, I just want to go back to Zanzibar because it's it's really turning out to be something special and but I'm learning a lot from it. I'm gaining speed. I'm getting familiar with the game. So I still take it as a learning experience. But a lot of the stuff, I'm like, I'm not going to put much time into this. And I'm just throwing stuff. Like, even the sign. I was like, look how fast this sign came together. I was like, let's just throw something together and see how it turns out. And while it's not a masterpiece, <laughs> I still think it sometimes less is more. And I was like, I, I really like the way this turned out. And... I literally was going into it thinking, let's just get this done super quick. Like, it doesn't need to be pretty. It just needs to say Zanzibar. And I put a few things on there, and it turned out pretty good. So again, sometimes less is more. And so I'm happy with the way that turned out. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we're just sculpting this area out, adding to it. Uh, we have big plans for this central area to turn it into an enclosure. I think I talk about that later on in the episode, so I'll leave that be. But uh, I ended up deleting the pathway there because I'm planning on doing some staff pathways instead. And now we're jumping over to this area because basically I'm, I'm trying to fill in all the gaps of like what, what are we missing, what's important, like what of our big bulk things. like. Like I said earlier, getting all those enclosure things, all the important stuff. So one of the important things here is making sure our staff pathway going down into our incognito area is like covered up and looking good. And as I'm doing this rock work, I eventually go into a building spree and I'm like, OK, well, why don't we just decorate this whole area? <laughs> I mean, might as well make it look pretty while we're at it. Like I had plans to do that, and that's part of it's this is another mini project within the project itself so you know there's it, it's a quite a large one too it's a big open area so i was looking at wix's shop here and i actually looked at the back side of it and stuff it had too much detail in the back we're just going to be hiding the stuff in the back anyways so I, I wanted to just stuff something in there that looked good and it wouldn't work so you know i was like okay well why don't I build something? And my plan here was to take the default staff buildings and just kind of wedge them in and, and then cover it up with stuff like, you know, bushes, trees, and just kind of uh, mash it all in there and then just disguise it all. Now, for whatever reason, even though the path we have more, I even tried flattening it out. We have more than enough space to be able to build something in there. But the game's just not letting me. Super frustrating. I know, like, in Planet Coaster, there's, like, a thing called No Collision. I've turned all those checkboxes on in this game, and it's still not working for me. And I hope on release we have all the checkboxes to do No Collision so we can just mash things together, mash things into pathways if we want to. I, f I feel like we need to have that creative freedom, but nothing was working out for me. So I was like, okay, screw it. You know what? We're just going to build it back a bit and you know wedge stuff in and i couldn't even get the building there and i was like this is so frustrating so the we have the back buildings 
as far back as we can go the side buildings as far back as we can go and they're just bathrooms right now and i'm just gonna rip out the bathrooms put in different shops and decorate it so again i don't want to spend too much time on shops because it is the beta and yeah i i, I could put cheap beast signs on things and you know <clears throat> hang a bunch of ivy off them and put some nice trim on them or whatever it's something you're just gonna pass by and be like cool shop <laughs> it's it's really like a small thing in the overall picture so it's it's allowing me to get on with life a little bit faster and just get her done so yeah that that's what we get we have four shops in there one's a, i think i go into it later so you'll see later what they are because I, I can't really remember right now so i'm trying to the trees are really frustrating um there's not a lot of big bushy bushes. You have to find the right tree and just sink it into the ground and pretend that that's a bush. And then a lot of the trees are either way too big or way too small. Uh, so I'm still not familiar with the foliage in this game. But we're getting there. And honestly, like, I don't know what goes together. Like, these white rose bushes, I'm like, sure. And I, I don't even... Some of those trees are probably from different parts of the world. I don't, I don't know if they're supposed to be together, but they look good, so that's all that matters to me. <laughs> I, I was going for a vibrant, lush look because we have a lot of red rock, we have a lot of stone, uh, we have big open areas with like sand and and uh, dirt, uh, so I want the the surrounding areas to pop. So that's what this whole central area is about, and I put these little planters in, and we're gonna cover it in flowers and and just mess around so I, i'm just i don't really have any rhyme or reason to what i'm doing i'm just filling and i'm like sure this will work just trying to get it done and like i said the, the less is more attitude just go 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 fill 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 and uh hopefully it turns out looking good so i have this like rush mentality right now and with that rush mentality i'm actually producing a lot of stuff that i'm happy with <laughs> so i'm like maybe i need to start thinking like this on release because sometimes you fiddle with something for so long just trying to perfect it when if you know like spending seven hours on a shop just so it'd be placed and maybe just using a default shop would allow you to move on to other things and just you know it's about broader strokes rather than micro details and I, i'm finding that that works out for me um so this last bit of the speed build, I started doing the educational speakers and it's included in the speed build here. And then I'm like, nobody wants to see this. <laughs> but I did make a little post and I started playing around with the volumes and stuff and it, and it turned out pretty good. But I'm just gonna end off the speed build here because there's just a few more seconds of this and I, I ended up cutting it. And we'll just jump into the park and give a tour of all of our new builds. Boom, let's do it. Alrighty, so here we are in game everybody Zanzibar Zoo. There's a look at our park sign I mean, I did put a whole lot of time into it But I like the simplicity of it and I like the way it turned out our main focus for this park is the hippopotamus and The lions so obviously we want those up front and center. I don't know if we're gonna end up having buffalo But I like the way they look in there I got a bunch of colors this the tiger the Indian style tiger centerpiece is biting the sign quite like the way that turned out and uh, so I decided I would go with the railed pathway rather than building a barrier and the reason I decided that was actually my mind was made up for me because if you put the barrier close to the path for whatever reason when you go to add another path to it it goes red Whenever there's a barrier too close to a path, it seems to bug out the pathway. So I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. So we're just gonna have to go with that. Now, for our education, we have a limited power supply. Our power being down there and down here. So we can't really put education here until later. If we end up expanding the park or adding in a few more exhibits throughout the sides, and we have some extra staffing areas on the other side of the park, then we can look into doing that. But this should be more than enough. As you can see with the education, there's quite a lot. So pretty happy with the way that turned out. And because it's so high, these educational speakers, you can turn up the loudness and it won't be so loud where it'll bother the hippos down below. So that was always, I think that's a strategy is like, how loud can you get the music without bothering 
the anim animals in the enclosure. And I do think that is a thing. You don't want to have loudspeakers everywhere bothering the animals. So that's our, our education. And we're going to add in more because I haven't put the TVs in or any other stuff. This is probably a pretty small park tour. I wanted to do a big elaborate thing for this episode, but then I'm like, you know what? We built quite a bit in this episode. Let's just tour it. And then uh, the next episode, I'll build something really big here because yeah, I do want to obviously do something fancy with the entrance like we did back here. No idea why I went for that first. I mean, I, I guess the rock, we had this exposed area like we did here. And as soon as I put the rocks down, I was like, let's do something else over there. So we'll go check that out in a sec, but I just want to show you these little huts that we put in. You would have saw that in speed build. This is a pre-made blueprint that I just modified and ripped apart. I figured, you know, we don't have a whole lot of enclosure area for our hippos to get privacy. So, and I don't know how much they really need, to be honest. When I did a test tester in my previous zoo, um, I didn't really have a whole lot of enclosure space. And they were okay with it but they have a big cave which we can jazz up a little bit and then we'll put their beds and stuff in here that's pretty big and having one on either side is pretty awesome oh the game is freaking out yeah so one on either side that should keep them happy they could also kind of hide underneath this big fat bridge here so that's a thing and if we need more we could just put a few huts around there's tons of open space so yeah, there we go. And then we got the gazebo, the modified gazebo with some educational speakers. The viewing area is quite awesome from up here. Nice and high, you gotta see the whole thing. We'll put plenty of uh, donation bins throughout the sides here. Some TVs and stuff. And then this is a, a fully realized detailed area over here. And uh, also another eating area. So we come through here. And it's a magical little garden. So, didn't cost... I, I, I might have mentioned this. I'm doing this recording before the actual speed build recording. So, I'm not sure what I ended up mentioning. But, uh, I did really want to get the buildings underneath the pathway. But, uh, game was just bugging out and not letting me do that. So, because of that, I wanted to jam it in and integrated into the paths and then I just put these houses out front. Uh, they, they turned out looking pretty good though. But we have a, uh, what is this a gulp? No, this is information. So umbrellas and things, mexalente, bathrooms and water. So there you go. Some seating areas. And our staff pathway. It's all enclosed with rocks. It's nicely hidden from the food court. I don't think the guests will be bothered by this. I probably should have checked. Negative impact on the guests. Ooh. Just one little spot. Oh, wait. Is that really negatively impacting the guests? Well, that sucks. They can't see it. <laughs> the game should be smart enough to know that that is out of range. Hmm. But, hmm. That does suck. Whatever. It's one little spot. It's fine. S still kind of heartbreaking because I was kind of proud of how hidden this area is because the guests are going to come down this pathway and they're like, oh, what's down here? That'll take us to our next area where we do the lions. And they don't really ever are bothered by this staff stuff. So we can come on down here. I don't know if I showed this already, but we put some plants and some rocks in there just to jazz it up. I also put the trade center in here. I'm going to probably have a few trade centers just because they'll go to whichever one's closest to the enclosure. And when we release our hippos, we want the, the staff to all come down here, grab the hippos, drop them in, grab the hippos, drop them in. And if we have to sell any hippos to the or release them to the wild, boom, they, they don't have a short, they have a short run. And I ended up putting a brick wall over top of our brick wall to kind of hide the red brick. So we went with like the sandstone. I put some ivy on there, some hanging stuff. And, you know, you could tell that there's something going on there. But, you know, it's a, we don't need to completely disguise it. So I like the way it looks. I like the way it turned out. I got a little bit of green down below, a little bit of green up top. 
it's looking lush and vibrant. We got some rock work around the sides. And we just got to dress things up as we go. I want to get the hippos in here, see what they think about the area. And I, I have another bug that popped up. We, we checked this in the previous episode, I believe. Oh, no. It fixed itself. Okay. It wasn't telling me how much water they had. So I wanted to make an adjustment. So with these underground caves, we've technically added in 3,600 square meters because I think we were at 10 and 9. With that said, I could probably add another 2,000 water, roughly, and that'll bring us to 11 on 11. So I can extend the water a little bit more, although it's getting a little bit sparse. I think I might do that here or just bring it out a little bit here, something like that. We'll figure it out, but I do definitely need to add a little bit more water. Uh, Hippo's like 50-50 and... I estimated about 15,000 and 15,000 for a full herd, but that's just a guesstimate. I think we're gonna have more than enough before they start complaining. We should be able to get up to full hippopotamus herd size. So I'm pretty excited about that. So that's where we're at. We have some enclosures. We have the, the new gazebo over top. We have this new food court back here. It's looking good. It's looking more complete. Now, if you can imagine if we do something similar to here over here, how good this is going to look. If this is thriving, that's thriving. We just need some small decorations and things around the sides, maybe some trees. But again, I want to save this open area. If if we end up getting the lion's den done, then uh, we want to come back and add some enclosures around the outside. And that alone will make the outside feel more spruced up. But I'm not really sure what to do around the rock barrier outside. I don't want to just put too many plants. So I might make like a plant cluster in a tree. And just like duplicate that every so often. And just kind of spread it out. And that way we'll have like a few decoration points throughout this long walk. And that should be good. So that, that's my hopes to go into the next episode, which I haven't done yet, obviously, because you're looking at the one safe file I have available. But my focus for the next video is going to be this area. And looking at the Zoopedia, our, we want, I really wanted to get the turtles back in, the tortoises. Now, I was looking on Google. It said that all tortoises are turtles but not all turtles are tortoises or something. <laughs> but basically, tortoises are in the species of turtles, I guess. However, some turtles like water and tortoises don't. But the definition of a turtle is like a shelled creature, which is technically a tortoise too. Anyways, lots of people commenting about the freaking turtle over the... To or the tortoise is a turtle, not a turtle. I don't know. Anyways, what do I know? <laughs> Look, let's let's get into it. Turtles need 230 square meters. They uh, don't want water, but a lot of animals don't have a preference of water. And if you give them water, they will use it. And I thought the tortoises would have, but they're they're a dry land animal that like a lot of enclosure space and uh, they like to be covered up. The, the bachelor size will get one male and three females. And then uh, looking at something similar, I try to find something similar and look like the Nile monitor is similar. They like one male and two females. Their space is uh, roughly 300 square meters plus 75 water. So a little bit bigger than what the tortoises want and uh, small, a, a small size. So that's kind of like a perfect balance. They're not going to be for breeding. They're not going to be making... Like, yeah, they're not going to be made for conservation points or anything. They're just there for the guests to view. And with that said, this area here, if we combined some turtle area, some Nile monitor area, a little pond in the middle for the, the, the monitors, that should be a sufficient amount of space for both of them. We can stick staff area back here, try to cover it up, do some rock work and bushes back here. Make it kind of similar to what we have over there. And that should be good. I had this vision it would be cool if we had like a waterfall going down into a stream. That stream went into the Nile monitor area. That'd be neat. But at the same time, I like the look of the gazebo there. So we'll see what I end up coming up with. But we're definitely going to have to jam a staff path. Like a four meter one. Takes us back there. And then we'll have like a little keeper hut. And I got to try to get that keeper hut in such a way where it doesn't have a negative impact on the guests so we should have a and we have a staff room down there a large one so if they really want to break they should be able to go downstairs 
I don't know if that's too much of a walk for them. It doesn't seem like a long walk. So that should be fine. And if we really need to, we could put another trade center, a workshop, or a research center. Yeah, I didn't put a research center over there, which I regret. But we don't really need one. We fully researched our hippos. So yeah, we're probably going to want a research center here because the researchers need to go investigate the, the area and then they, they come back in with their whatever they discovered and they go back to the research center. And when we put these animals down, we will not have research for them. So probably a keeper hut, a research hut, maybe even our workshop. So whatever buildings we have over here, a small staff room, whatever, we'll just kind of fill this back area up with three or four staff buildings, try to enclose them, try to hide them and integrate it into the scenery and build out two little enclosures. Now, the, the guess, guess we'll be able to view the enclosures from here, but for also technically from up here, that should work. So I think that's more than enough. And if we get that thriving, that's two more eras. Then we have the third, and then we go into the lines. That's our fourth. That's a good amount. From there, I, I think, you know, if we have any time left, we can do our best to try to sneak in a few extras around the sides. And I think that'll be a pretty cool looking zoo. Boom, that's my focus. I'm gonna jump into it and start building this area up and hopefully I come up with something good because if it's anything like that area there, it'll tie the whole thing together and we could just spruce up the outsides in that same episode, hopefully. And then I can really focus on um, just getting the little management things down. Maybe we can look into actually releasing the hippos, but we still have enough cash left to start on the lion area. So I want to say, screw it. Let's just postpone the hippos, get the lions in and uh, try to build that area up. That's what I'm hoping to try, but we'll see. I, if we're building an enclosure, we might as well try to get the animals in. So we might as well get the hippos in and just try to get this park making money. My only concern with that is the the, the upkeep. All right, we're gonna have no profits and nothing but upkeep. We will go <laughs> into the negative and we'll just go bankrupt. I don't wanna lose the money I saved, but I think if we get enough going with the three enclosures, the hippos, the two in the front and all the restaurants, and we just crank up the prices on things and just set it all up, just set this area up to make a be a profitable zoo. I think we can push play for once and start making a profit again, hopefully. Then we could go work on our lines. So we'll see how it goes. And that's pretty much going to do it for me today in today's episode, everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. If you're new, subscribe for more Daily Planet Zoo videos. Love hearing your guys' comments. Let me know what you guys think down this in, in the, the comments below. And sorry, I haven't been reading the, the comments in the videos recently. I just been trying to, I mean, we lost our park and it threw me off and I'm just trying to focus on getting something done before the beta is over. So I'm in a bit of a, a, a pressured, I'm in a pressure cooker. So uh, definitely on release, that be a thing i'll be reading your comments every single episode and we'll have all the time in the world the game will be out forever and i can take my time but because of the nature of the beta i'm just i'm just trying to get episodes out to you guys and try to build something and i want i want to be able to say i made something cool by the end of the beta and we were <laughs> that would have happened if we didn't lose our last park so lesson learned and uh we're just gonna keep cranking out so boom there you guys go all right thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye now